Hey guys, today I want to show you something that can make your images look a bit more interesting. I want to show you how you can create ambient on your images and I, I'm using this image uh, to create this and this is the original image and this is the final result. So I'm going to show you how to make these light effects and this color, uh, this color tones. I hope you will like it and let's get started. This effect is not really difficult to achieve. Um, it's really, it's really easy actually. And uh, let me just group everything here and drag it under my image. And let's start over again. You can create this if you want to make sun rays and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm using this image of this train here, uh, this abandoned train. And in order to make the lights, it's really easy. Just create a new layer. I'm gonna select the polygonal lasso tool. And I have to do this manually for each window here. I have these windows here on the left side and I'm just gonna select the area like that and double click there to close my selection. And I'm gonna fill this with the color which is, well, this color over here, not white, this really unsaturated uh, yellow. And once you have that filled with the color, just press Control Command T, load the free transform, choose the distort option, just right click and choose distort. And here just move this like that and this will be my sun ray and now I'm gonna right click again and choose perspective and click here the stop point and just move it like that to make it wider and press enter to accept the change now the only thing that we have to do here is just um, blur it so I'm gonna go to filter blur and instead of using Gaussian blur I'm gonna choose the um, box blur uh, I really like it because it blurs the edges, but not the the inside. Not, it's not really like a linear blur, and that's why I like it. And I'm gonna leave a radius of about almost 200 pixels for this canvas size. And now I'm gonna create a layer mask and select the gradient and black to white uh, linear, and just uh, drag like that from here to here to hide, well, to fade away the effect and probably move it a bit slightly towards the left. The effect for this first one is a bit too strong, so I'm gonna drop the opacity to like 50%. And now create a new layer and do the same for the rest of the, of the windows here. For this other one, I'm gonna do it again really quick. Double click to close that, fill that, Control T, right click, distort, move it here. And this time, for the second one, I'm gonna use less blurring effect. Um, because this one is a bit further away and I want to have I want to see the difference between the two because otherwise they will blend together and it seems like there's just one sun ray so I'm gonna use less blurring effect here box blur and I'm gonna use half the size well, the radius more or less I'm gonna move it right there create the layer mask and fade the effect like that and drop the opacity to 50% or something like that. You can even uh, use different um, different angles, slightly different angles, because uh, that way you will uh, you will see um, you will see the effect from each window. But uh, it's not necessary if you don't want to do that. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh, for the for the third one, I'm not gonna do it because otherwise the the effects will overlap and it's too strong the effect. But I will make the effect for this windows over here. Uh, notice that each of these effects it's on its own layer, so keep that in mind. Right click, distort, and move this like that. Um, the reason why you see this, uh, it's not really like straight and that's because when you make the selection you have to make it straight. I'm gonna use the eraser to delete that and here I'm gonna blur it but a lot less like maybe 30 pixels. I want to see this hard harder edge here. Create the layer mask and boom I have that effect there. I'm gonna drop the opacity to 70%. This, uh, I'm gonna leave this a bit stronger because I want to see, I want to be able to see the that the effect uh, it's actually from the from the last window well from the windows here on the back and the last one 
I'm gonna create a new layer, fill that. And this time I'm gonna create a different angle for this one, a bit lower like that. And I'm gonna use the perspective as well. And I'm gonna press Control Command F to apply the last blurring effect that I had, create the layer mask and just fade the effect like that. You can try blend mode if you want, uh, soft light, or let's try overlay, but uh, I think on normal or screen, they look uh, they look okay already. The screen blend mode, uh, um, you will not see the, you will not see the um, colors. So that's why I'm using the normal blend mode and just drop the opacity, this one to like 30 or 50%. And we already have the lights. I'm gonna group everything here. And if you wanna change the color of them, you can use uh, layer styles for the whole group. I'm using Photoshop CC and I can do that, but if you don't have, if you cannot apply layer styles to groups, you have to do it manually for, for each uh, of, that, of the lights here. I'm gonna use a color overlay and you can use a soft light blend mode or try others. Color mm, is not working, so I could probably try normal and um, just drop the opacity and that's it. I'm gonna leave it on soft light because I like how that looks. And just leave it like that. And we already have the lights now. The only thing that I wanna do now is just change a bit the color of the whole scene. But um, what I really wanted to show you is how to make these lights. But let's make the colors as well. I'm gonna use a color lookup. And I will use the tension green for this uh, right over here. And I'm gonna leave the blend mode to normal and just drop the opacity to 50%. You can try blend modes if you want, uh, soft light for if you wanna have more contrast, but you will lose that color tone. And that's why I like to use the normal blend mode. Maybe even higher at 60%. I like this um, green tone. And then some curves. And with the curves, I wanna slightly uh, darken the whole image, like so. Now I want to change the tones a bit, I'm going to go into the blue channel and add a point over here and just drag this one up to make the shadows uh, give them this blue tone, like so, and leave this like that. And this is the effect, the before and after. Probably with the greens I could add some green touches. Um, here on the shadows as well. Just a bit like that. Okay, and that's uh, the effect before and after. I also added some dust effects uh, from a pack that I have. I made these dust particles with After Effects, but um, I did not publish it yet, so it's not on the on the website yet. Paste it right over here and change the blend mode to screen to get rid of the black background and just have this flying dust particles. I'm gonna make it smaller and then just duplicate it a few times to cover my entire canvas here. And that's it. That's my dust particles over there. I'm gonna group them. And that's it. This is the effect that I wanna show you before and after. I hope you like it and we'll see you on the next tutorial.